Okay, so good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome again to another recorded conversation. Today, I'm talking to Natalie King, who is the confidence coach. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so, Natalie, how did you get into being a confidence coach? Oh, that's a good question. But thank you, Penny, for, for inviting me and letting me come and share some stuff with you. So how did I become a confidence coach? I'd like to say that it was very easy, planned A, B, C, D <laughs> steps that I took. But in actual fact, it was a winding road that took you over cliffs and round corners and round bends until I found where I wanted to be. So let me just backtrack a little bit to nine years and beyond. And I had lost, I didn't have confidence. I had lost my confidence through growing up, through school, through working for people because I was bullied and it just got eroded from me. It just slowly got tapped out of me that I didn't know what confidence was. I didn't know that anybody can be confident. I just thought, well, I'm just one of those people. If I can survive life, die at the other end, and okay, that should be good enough. Yeah. Not a very, quite a bleak outlook. Yeah. And and then I got a the last job that I had, and the bullying just got too much for me. And I call this my proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. Mm. Is I was going down the A14, 70 miles an hour, and I had a panic attack. I don't know how I got off the A14. I don't know how I drove through Cambridge. Anybody who knows Cambridge, a lot of cyclists, a lot of students. I don't know how I got into work in the middle of Cambridge without hurting anybody or myself or having an accident. Mm. And when I got to work, it was enough is enough. Yeah. I've handed in my notice there and then. Verbal notice. I walked in and said, by the way, I quit. How much notice do I need to give you? This is my verbal You'll have the written one tomorrow. Yeah. And it's like, okay, now what? Wow. <laughs> I just quit my job. What now? Yeah. And I got involved with a multi-level business. I was a customer and I realized I could have a business. And I just thought, I'm not going for being employed again. It's just got worse and worse and worse as it's, as it's gone along. Let me try something totally different, totally new and panic later. <laughs> you have to be in a desperate position to do that <laughs> so I started the multi-level business and I learned so much I realized that actually I can do this I can have my own business I don't need to be employed again so that essentially was the the breakup of my old life and the start of my new life through this company I did a lot of personal development I had to do a lot of courses and I think that's even when I met you way back when at, at my first network meeting yeah <laughs> so this is what nine years ago so this is how long wow. we've known each other yeah and I just started to learn I just started to absorb absorb anything somebody said read this book I was reading the book somebody said try this workshop I was trying that workshop workshop I was just doing anything and everything that I could and as I and then I was just joined Toastmasters International it's a public speaking organization yes I remember that because I had to learn to speak I had to go to network meetings you know where you've got to give a 60 second pitch I think Penny will attest to my first few being really bad <laughs> hey that was a long while ago but I've come a long way since then so that's absolutely. fine I know they were bad <laughs> but and then I slowly started to realize I'm changing decisions that I'm making are changing I'm starting to look forward to new things instead of having this attitude of oh if I just survive life until the end I'll be okay to what can I do how can I take control and do something so essentially that is where it started through becoming a public speaker through all these courses reading and everything that I was doing it was like oh confidence I like this topic and then I started to really learn about confidence 
learn about it as a topic. So fast forward nine years, that's how I became a confidence coach. And well, that's fabulous to hear. So often, Natalie, we hear of people and how they help people now is because of their own journey and where they've come. And very similar myself. So how do you go about identifying? Or, I mean, we both know that co confidence affects, well, it affects all of us throughout our lives for various reasons and to varying degrees. But how do you go about identifying uh, somebody's pathway forward? Uh, you know, and how you might help them start that journey. So when I start working with with clients is there's certain things that I like to really start to learn or get them to learn about themselves is finding out sort of your personality almost. Mm -hmm. And my big thing is whether you are more introverted or extroverted. I find that as running a business, that's quite important. It's also starting to learn about your, your strengths, your weaknesses. And then I start to look at your values or we start to understand your values. We start to understand who you are. Who is that inner person sitting inside of you? Because what happens is we put on these personas starting at school, first job, college, university, whatever, we put these personas on and we lose track of who that core essence is. Yeah. So when we start to really look into that, it's almost, my clients almost get to meet themselves. They get to meet who they really are. And it's, it's great because they're like, oh, I used to be like that as a kid. Yeah. And they light up. It's like, but you still are like that. Let's bring it out. Let's see yeah. how we can utilize this passion or this idea or this, this inner person who you are. How can we bring that into your business? And that's how I like to start. So essentially, my clients get to find out who they are. Again, they get to connect with themselves. You almost have them to start. stand back. And, and look at them, take a sort of a, uh, a look at themselves as almost from another person's angle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then we start to work on the confidence and work on them, really, and them growing to where they need to be. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's fabulous. And, and this is another thing I love hearing about how when other people help others, you know, in ways, it's the different the different ways we all have discovered an approach and and can provide this you know uh to help people because obviously it's a big thing confidence is a big thing that i work with when people who don't like getting in front of the camera um and then there are some similar sort of similar strategies as well there mm. but of course and, and i think we probably both agree and i've been talking quite a bit about this and this uh i'm using this analogy of one step at a time and it's just getting people to consider just take that first step and that importance just to take that first step yes find the right person to help you almost you know holding your hand to show you that way forward but just taking that first step and they don't realize how unscary actually once they've done it it can be mm -hmm. and and they can see their way forward yes that that one step is the first yeah. step yeah, it, it, it's, um, I don't know if you take it. In my life, I've had, when, when you, something is, is huge and you, you, it's like standing up against a brick wall and you're so close to that brick wall, you can't see round it. When it takes somebody to help you just stand back, you know, and go, right, okay, one step at a time and show you the way forward. And exactly as you've just said, getting to know somebody and getting to know what their particular challenges are uh, you know, it, and then you get to sort of the analogy of you can start to show them the way around the wall or a different way over it. So yes. Yeah. And not one size fits all. So every client is different. They have their different strengths and weaknesses. So it's finding what works for them yes. and how they like to do it. So some like to race and do as much as possible and others like to just take it slower and have more support more encouragement to get where they're going I mean you know that Penny is everybody's different and this yeah. is what I like to 
I have a set a program, but it's adaptable to everybody. Yes, it, yes, exactly that, um, which is why, yes, and it, it's so important to people to understand that it's a very individual journey. You and I have, we've been on our own individual journeys um, and that identifying that with someone else and when somebody shares that with you. Um, and, and funnily enough, another, another skill I used to do as a teenager, I learned how to teach people to ride horses. Um, and those skills have never left me but I discovered confidence is a big thing as well. When you were astride a horse and for, you know, people one step at a time, what's the point in rushing? I used to hear people, well, they should be at this level now. And you go, why? What? No, you know, they're, they're getting there. They're understanding now what, what it takes. And you can apply that to so many things to do with confidence, can't you? Definitely. Definitely. So the other thing, of course, we both um, you do in our own ways and developed is is giving people a, a, a toolbox, mm -hmm. not an actual physical toolbox, of course, <laughs> um, but, you know, a toolbox for people to, you know, their own personal toolbox to give them those strategies and things that they can call on mm -hmm. uh, and use every time, you know, they have that particular challenge with yourself over particularly whatever it is that challenges for that confidence and myself when it's particularly people getting in front of a camera and we give them those those toolboxes and um i don't know about you i do it myself i've developed mm -hmm. my own toolbox that i have to call back on sometimes it seems to be missing that particular tool but yes <laughs> But yeah, we, you, we, yeah, you understand how to look through the box and go, ah, yes, of course, that's now what I need to apply. And this is something that, like like you, I, I provide my clients with the toolbox. It's up to them to use the tools. Yes. And, and this is what I have a lot of tools in my toolbox. And as we go through, as I'm working with them, they, they given another tool, another tool, another tool so that it's, by the time they're finished with me, they have a, a lovely box that they can open up and, and look and get out what they need. Yeah. But it's also one thing I enjoy doing is sometimes when they're getting really, uh, might have a moment of overwhelm or something, and we then talking and I say, right, remember when we did this or this, that's the tool to use. And it's like, oh, yes, I forgot about that. So it's, it's, I'm also there to remind them what's in their toolbox, what they yes. have already, what they've got and how, to, and how they can use it. Yeah. So they might not have understood it when they were sort of essentially given this tool, but now that they've got to use it, it's like, ah, I mean, it's like you're given a wrench. It's like, oh, what do I do with this? Until you've got to actually use it. It's like, ah, that makes sense. I can, you know, fix yeah. a tap or what, whatever it is. Yeah. It, it's, when you use something, you learn about it. You you get to understand what that tool is for. Yeah, yeah. And and using the analogies, using different analogies for people as well, kind of again makes gets them to step back and have that light bulb moment. Ah, yeah. You know, uh, and uh, you used an example that you, you you said a little bit earlier. I often refer to my um, Emperor's New Clothes moments. If you know the story of the Emperor's New Clothes, um, we get told so many things through life and we just believe them. Oh, well, that's, that has to be true, mm -hmm. especially when it's things about ourselves. Uh, and actually, you know, who'll stand up and go, do you know what? That's not quite right. Yeah, had you thought about looking at it this way? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Natalie, it's been wonderful to chat to you. Thank you, thank you so much for your time. Um, obviously, when this goes on to YouTube, I will add your contact details and how people can get in touch with you uh, and help you. Um, but I've loved our conversation and I feel we probably could talk about an awful lot more, but it gives people that sort of little taster and and where obviously what we do we both do overlaps and cross crosses over um and and so important to both so important to both it is i mean what you do is is really 
shining, seeing that person and bringing them out on film to go back to the old ways yeah. before digital, bringing that person out and, and showing, almost shining their light for them. And this is something that is so important, especially now where everything is, you know, you have digital. So people need to see you more. So I love what you do. Thank you. I, I, you know, and I always remember very clearly when I first came into photography professionally and started working with people uh, and people who didn't really want to be the other side of the camera. And I, it's, it's as if something, I see something new when I'm working with them through the lens. And I wanted to bottle what I could see and give it to them and go, look, that's how good you are. Which of course you can't really do, but I often come back to that and go, hmm. you know, it's just something that sticks in your mind, uh, and you want to be able to give that person that. Um, and things are changing, but new challenges keep coming up, which I will be blogging about and talking about as well. That continue to challenge us. New technology is fabulous, but it brings its own challenges. Mm, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working on a, on a little pill, a little confidence pill that I can okay. just hand to people. But I'll let you know when I make when when I get it. Yeah, I mean, let me know how much. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Natalie, thank you so, so, so much. And it's been lovely to chat to you. Thank you. Well, thank you. And I've really enjoyed it. Wonderful. We will catch up again. <laughs>